I'm Jake. I'm Tom. We are Velocities in Music. This is our podcast, and today we're going to do a discussion topic on ways of discovering new music. But before we get started, I would ask that all of our lovely listeners out there, you guys are the best, you're the reason why we get up in the morning and, and think about music all day and then decide to record a podcast on the weekends and distribute it for you guys. But to do your part, we need you to go to your favorite podcast app and subscribe to our podcast. We are on iTunes. You can get us there. Um, or if you're on Android phone, I think our, our podcast service publishes to mm-hmm. publishes to Android devices as well. So um, any any major podcast downloading app will be able to find us. Um, and if not, let us know because we need to fix that. Um, so, but we'll continue posting our podcasts on YouTube for the for, for as long as as you know we plan on being around. Um, and, and getting comments there since a lot of you guys, I know, you know, were familiar with us through our video reviews and are still, um, watching, uh, watching our podcast, uh, through our YouTube channel. Um, also just proactively, if you guys have suggestions for topics for Tom and I to talk about or feedback on how the, how the podcast is going, hit us up at velocitiesandmusic.com or velocitiesandmusic at gmail.com that's our email address and we're always fielding emails and returning emails and getting that music discussion going so tom in this day and age where on september 25th you know 10 new albums or 20 (laughs) new albums are released big day big day a lot of big names are released we just covered that in our september 2015 music summary uh podcast episode um you know but but outside of just going through what was released today uh we got to talk about how we discover new music and what are some different ways of discovering new music so yeah. first of all like back back in like our our dad's era yeah. you know like my dad graduated high school in 1974 you know the height of classic rock as we know it yeah. right and and you know think about how he and was was finding new music that you know may or may not have been played on mo- pop radio right exactly well back then obviously you know technology was a little bit different also you know rock music was still a baby you know it's it's really it was, it was a newer thing people were getting into it and a lot because, of people hated it right but because it was newer a lot of people also had reason to be much more excited about yeah. it because it was fresh uh but really i think you know probably the two main ways that people got into new music back then was either by the radio mm-hmm. um or from like a publication a well, magazine and, of some right kind. and actually you know I'm, I'm ignoring the whole social aspect of it too right. word, word of, of mouth, mouth plays a big part of usually it, m- the most effective form of, of... <laughs> De- definitely that cannot be undervalued but uh, as far as more official channels sure. go you know back then I think that these niche kind of music publications you know magazines and so on uh, really had a, a big impact on people you know it, as music was becoming a, a new thing of course music journalism needed to catch up mm-hmm. uh, needed to stay with that and and of course it's always trying to stay with the modern times and what's new and and so publications were around. Um, but then also, you know, the radio. I mean, people listen to the radio mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. These new radio stations were coming up to college, play new kinds of music. College radio stations playing a lot of the very independent right. stuff. And that's big. And that's something that really changed, you know, I th- really started to change mostly in the 90s. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you know, and there was a lot of legislation and kind of things like that that played into the reasoning why. And I'm not going to get into that too specifically, but you know, a lot of radio stations really tended to converge on what they were playing. Mm-hmm. You know, playing a lot of the same kinds of pop stuff. And uh, and you know, it was kind of a shame because back, especially in the '80s, I feel like uh, there was a lot more uh, in. Indie, like kind of college radio stations, had a lot more clout. Mm -hmm. There was also just a lot more room to play what you want, play what you wanted people to hear, what you wanted to expose them to. So, surfing around the radio, you didn't have as much of a problem as you do today, where if you search around the radio, not only are you going to hear a lot of the same things as other radio stations, but uh, it's just, it's not going to open up your eyes too much, really, to what's out there. Uh, Now, we have a great college radio station here in Ames, Iowa, uh, 88.5 KURE. Uh, I used to be a DJ there. I love doing that. I feel like it harkens back to, you know, kind of the old way of of exposing people to new music and getting excited about it. But the problem is that that area is really starting to decline. So what are people left with? Mm -hmm. The internet. They're right. left with the internet. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a bad thing to be left with. Right. Let's well, I mean, if, straight, if you think but. about it, I mean, if you really take a step back, we have, we are so spoiled in, yeah. in that there are so many ways to find new music. 
um, whether it's good or bad. Um, you know, you have a ton of methods at your disposal, which we're going to get into some of those um, that, that we use and we like. Um, and obviously, we like aren't even going to scratch the surface. There's no way we're going to be able to cover every way that you can possibly find new music. And it may not even be the way that you look for music. The point is uh-huh. to talk about it and say, like, what are some cool ideas, cool ways of, of how you found a new artist that you've now fallen in love with? Um, you know, part of the fact of, of there just being, you know, with the Internet and all the, the new apps and software that's being released of, of having all of these new methods of, of getting and finding new music. Um, the other the other side of that coin is that there is so much new music being made. Right. Be, be, the advent of technology becoming cheap means that anyone with musical inclination, which I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, all human beings have music, like music is a part of our, our souls, uh-huh. right? And, and and we're all capable of musical expressionism and, and you know, given the right tools and, and, per, and, and the opportunity to pursue that, um, any human being can make great music. Um, and, and, you know, so when you empower a human being with that potential to do that, all of a sudden, you know, in the last 10 years, 15 years, we've seen just an explosion right. of, of music music and, and so much so that it is I don't believe it's possible um, and, and we certainly felt this pressure when we were doing uh, album reviews and um, that was the sole thing that we were doing uh-huh. Tom as velocities in music you know to I don't think it's possible to keep up with everything that's coming out so no, you have to not. you have to pick and choose you have to find the cream of the crop on, on what really the artists that really resonate you with you um, if you're if you're gonna really be into music otherwise you're just gonna end up listening right. to the same old thing you're gonna be like KGGO in Des Moines where <laughs> it's just classic rock over All and over again the same songs year after year yeah day after day yeah. within the same day <laughs> no what, what do you know you make a good point that not but not only can people make music so much easier but it is easier to find so at least that stays somewhat proportional but it is still somewhat of a futile venture to try to keep up with absolutely everything that's coming out right. now one thing i will say is at least that risk isn't there in terms of getting hold of something new having to pay for it mm-hmm. uh if a new album comes out and you're curious about it you can go stream it from somewhere and decide if you like spotify, it. spotify youtube right right there are several places to do that i mean you know, back, back in the day it was really it, hopefully you had a friend who had bought this record yeah. so that you could mooch off them and hear what it sounds like yeah. and if you wanted to buy it for yourself <laughs> or you went to a, a music store and you you had the the new releases or the recommendations from the people who worked at the store and you could put on those greasy headphones that hundreds of people had had on and, and preview music. And yet at the time, like I remember, like that was that was early 2000s when I was in high school and and it, I mean everyone did mm-hmm. that and it was yeah. so fun. Like we would we would get out of school. I remember my senior year get out, have open campus. And I'd be done with school at like two o'clock and I go to the local you know chain store and and we go in and and put those. G- gross headphones on and that was the coolest thing to do <laughs> back right, then. Yeah. Well, you got to check stuff out risk-free so that you knew what you were getting into. Now, blind buys are always fun, uh, but at the same time, depending on your budget, you don't didn't always want to take that risk. Right. So now, at least with, to match the output, the information and availability is there for people. Right. So that's, that's a big change. But at the same time, there's this saturation. There's so many channels of places to go to find new music, places like Velocities and Music. Yeah, that's kind um, of why we're here. Right, exactly. But And there, so there are a lot of people you know kind of like us doing those kind of independent publications out there as well there are a lot of websites blogs right blogs um but uh, they're also uh, one thing i will say that i've heard a lot of people do is follow record labels mm-hmm. you know record labels anymore there are a lot of new indie labels coming out that focus on very niche sounds mm-hmm. and if you like one or two of their artists and you like the style that they tend to put out, then it's worth keeping up with them and and finding new artists that way. Because really, that's what a label, what a record label should be doing for you. A, A record label's biggest asset is new talent. Finding that new talent supporting them, putting them out there so that people can get behind them. And, mm-hmm. and that's it's kind of their job. So I, I hear of a lot of people doing that these days. And that's kind of encouraging because right. I think that's a good way of finding new stuff. Because, you know, not every artist on a label will be created equal. Right. I mean, even look at the major labels. You know, look at like Capitol Records, for example. You know, they've got some major artists. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, they've got some that are that are still kind of, mm-hmm. you know, just, just burgeoning up into mm-hmm. the scene mm-hmm. uh, that maybe they just need the support. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, also, I will say with the major labels, 
you don't always get consistency in the sound. Right. It's more of a business move. It's not necessarily as niche and as specified as some of the indie labels. So t- take that for you know what you will. But uh, but there's a lot to be said about that. Same thing with music reviewing sites or or blogs or yeah. or podcasts or video uh, reviews or something like that. Um, you know, you know, find. I think the important thing there is to find some sort of publication that y- that resonates well with you. Right. Like, I know. I know. With like velocities in music, we had a number of, of folks who who found that that the way we, Tom and I went about reviewing uh, music really you know, really resonated with them. They wanted that full album experience. They wanted something that was original sounding that, that had really good songwriting. Um, you know, you know, all of those qualities that Tom and I look for, and I've talked about what we look for in our classic albums or our favorite albums list. Um, you know, and find, find an, uh, somebody, uh, uh, some sort of distribution service like that, um, that's commenting on music that, that resonates with you and follow them. Um, that's a great way to do it. Um, you know, one of them for me is all music. Um, yeah. you know, there's certain reviewers at all music that, uh, I f- have found really resonate well with me. So any of their, uh, picks, um, I always check them out. That's a really good way. Yeah. Tom and I, um, in, in, you know, our preparations for our album reviews back in the day and now what we're doing, cause we want to stay current on all new music so we can do our monthly, monthly summaries. But we we check out all the albums that come out on Metacritic. Like we just go through. The, I mean, Metacritic mm-hmm. lists all of them out. If you go to new releases, and then we just you know either look them up in Wikipedia and and look them up in Spotify and give them a play just to try to keep familiarity with the artist or get familiarity with the artist. And then if we like them, we kind of log them and then bring them to you guys. Mm-hmm. And Metacritic certainly doesn't capture everything, but I like the way that they approach it. Absolutely. Uh, and from there, it's nice because you can kind of click through and and because Metacritic. Based basically aggregates these other reviewing mm-hmm. sites. You can see which other reviewing sites are maybe giving scores to albums that you might agree with. You can click through to there, right. see if maybe there are some albums they're reviewing that Metacritic's not bothering to look at. Yes. Uh, and and as you click through these things, you just get on these big sprees of new music. I do the same thing on all music yeah. even, uh, where you, you click on a band you like, you go to the related artists and see who else might they sound like right. that you like. And, right. and I mean, never do I click on the related artists for an artist on all music and never do I know all of the artists right. that are listed there. Right. There's always something right. new to find. One thing that Tom got me to start doing, and I know Tom, you do this religiously, is going to acclaimedmusic.net. Yeah, I a- like that site. Acclaimedmusic.net publishes your list of the best songs released uh, for every mm-hmm. year and the best albums. Um, and I don't know, is it, is it some sort of like aggregate rating that they use? Yeah, they, some they, sort of yeah, they do. They, I don't know exactly how it works. It, it's kind of, it's funny. It's kind of a, it's a very uh, stripped down kind of independent website. Which I love. Uh, yeah, me too, because it's very real that way. But I mean, you can look at their best of lists, uh, you know, by year, by decade, by artist, by genre, by country. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the way that they split that out for kind of a statistics nut like me. I, I like looking at it that way. But then, and if you want to really geek out, Excel exports. Right, Excel exports. You you had to have loved that. Oh, I I, <laughs> I do. I export. Right. I export the the last years every single year. Right. So I I actually right now I'm I'm working my way down their list of the top three thousand albums of all time. Um, and that's, I, that's not adventurous at all. Right. I, I mean, I've been, I've been trucking along on that for like a, you know, a year or two and I think I'm somewhere in the seven hundreds, so it'll take me a while, but I'm also skipping over albums that I know. And of course there are a lot of albums in the top, you know, two to 400 that I, this guy's know. crazy. Um, I don't, I don't know how he does it. But, I don't know where he finds the time <laughs> to do this, but, but here's the thing too. It's, I like acclaimed music for the way they organize things, but lists in general are terrific lists and because to, lists. to me, I take the attitude of, if someone, anyone, I don't care who it is, if someone recommends something to me, I take that seriously. Liam Neeson's great at making lists. I, <laughs> he is. He as he as he claims, he's great at making lists. So I I like going through lists and listening through lists because you always find something new that you didn't like, and, and everyone's opinion is valid. I'd listen to Joe Schmo's top 50 albums list just because he bothered to put it together. Right. He took the time to really put right. thought it's, into it. Right, exactly. So I've listened through, you know, Rolling Stone magazine's top 500 albums mm-hmm. of all times list. That was a really fun exercise. Yeah. I found some great new stuff. Right. Uh, that I had never bothered to listen yep. to before. I also found some stuff that I didn't think deserved to be on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also really liked going through uh, Pitchfork Music's top 100 of the 70s, mm-hmm. 80s, and 90s each yeah. decade. The, you know, Pitchfork, 
I get kind of cynical about them. I'm not always a fan. Uh, but you got to say lists like that, even if you disagree with it, you're going to expand your knowledge. You're going to find at least one album in there that you really like that you'd never heard before. And right. I certainly did. Right. Yeah, I did that too when we went through, uh, recently went through a top 100 classic rock albums uh, of the 1970s. And one of the records that I found that I never heard before, it, it, and I'm ashamed of this. I mean, I'm going to admit this, but I'm ashamed of it. I want to just put that out there. <laughs> but Van Morrison's uh, Moon Dance. Oh, yeah. Uh, what a fantastic record. Never heard it before. Completely blew me away. Mm-hmm. Come, I've come back to it several times. Um, and just, I'm floored that I'd never heard that record before. Yeah. Actually, I actually want to like have a conversation with my dad about that. Like, Dad, why why have you let me down? Where were you, man? Where were you? You Come showed on. me all this great music, but you didn't show me this album. It's funny how that happens, though, because there, there are... there's another way of getting new music. Talk to your dad. <laughs> Talk to your dad. Talk to your parents. What were they? What were they into? Uh, hopefully, they point you in the right direction, right? But but the thing, the the fact is, there's always stuff that you missed. Uh, a couple bands that I've gotten into recently from listening to these lists uh, is a band from the 90s called Brainiac. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I cannot get enough of that band. Mm-hmm. Right up my alley. And I'm like, how did I never hear this right. before? But but that's that's what's great about it. You get to look into some lists, see what other people are liking. But But I also think that in general... Aside from lists, aside from these publications, just in general, music is a much more social thing than I think it ever has been. That's very true. Uh, I mean, with the advent of social media, I mean, yeah, you know, back in the day, there were record clubs, there were music clubs, there were things like that. People would loan each other CDs and records and tapes and and I donate still, hard drives. <laughs> right, that's what it grew into, and and I like that culture. That's still there to some degree. Um, now it's just it's taking place a lot more online. Rate rate your music. Another good place mm-hmm. to go do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are sharing their own lists. Spotify and makes it super easy to share an album that you like with mm-hmm. your friends. You know, and exactly. that's something that we've done for for years. And you know, Spotify is a great method of, of finding new music too because mm-hmm. they have related artists and um, it's it's uh, pretty go- easy to go on an impulsive music listening right. binge because you know you can you have instant gratification and in that you can click on an artist and listen to them immediately. Right. Um, so you can really find find some cool stuff which leads me both to to a main topic that Tom and I uh wanted to discuss in this podcast was uh we recently participated in what we called Music League. Yeah. Music League. So I'm I've been a longtime fantasy football player. I love the <laughs> NFL. You guys who've watched Velocities and Music for years know I'm a huge fan of the Green Bay Packers and um you know uh, you often talk about that in our reviews. I'm going to continue to do that going forward because it's the best football team ever. <laughs> that being said, um, I, I also like fantasy football, and, and the idea there is that you know you you are are competing um, your you p- draft a team of football players and then compete, right? Well, how can you how can you possibly bring that level of collaboration and idea because you're participating with all these other people in fantasy football? How can you bring that to music? Um, and so a friend of ours actually had this idea that you could make do a, a fantasy music league. Um, and so, uh, you know, Tom, Tom, help me describe this a bit. Sure. How, did, how did he set this up? So the way it was set up is we got eight people and you could do it with more people. You could do it with fewer people. Uh, it depends on how many songs you want to submit and so on. But, but we had eight. And so what we decided to do is every week we would each submit two songs anonymously to our, the, you know, the, the, the leader the, of our the manager, right, right? The manager of the group who, who is our friend Spencer. I'll just name drop there. So it's uh, easier Spencer. to refer to him. Oh, uh, Spencer. <laughs> so, uh, we'd send two songs to Spencer and then he would bring them all together, share them with everyone. We'd listen through the playlist, you know, as many times as it took and we'd vote for our top three. Uh, those top three picks would then, you know, get points. Mm-hmm. I, I think it was what three points for a first place vote, yep. two points for a second place vote, uh, one point for a third place vote, and depending on how many people voted for your songs, then the top three of all the songs that everyone voted for after aggregating and counting all those votes would get points for that week for mm-hmm. that round. We did this for ten weeks. Each week. You know, three people would get points for their songs, uh, and at the end, we we totaled it all up and picked a winner. Mm-hmm. And it was a really interesting exercise, and it was something that Jake, as you recall, we actually kind of struggled with in the beginning. Tom, you and I sucked at music. <laughs> yeah, we were well, not good at this. Well, I struggled. I struggled through the whole thing. You started to pick it up a bit. I I will say I'll come out and say I was dead last. I had <laughs> I had zero points 
through the entire first nine weeks, and, and then, and the, then very the, last the week, very last week, I, I think I get <laughs> <laughs> yeah, third place. I, tie, I tied someone for second and third, so I I would have either gotten one or two points. But I mean, I think the people who won got like what fifteen to twenty yeah, points right. somewhere in there. They, they yeah. knew what they were doing. I I got one by the last week, right. but I I did terrible. And I don't think this is a new idea by any means, but it certainly was new to us, and, right. and it was just uh, an overwhelmingly positive experience. I think it was frustrating at times too, because you know Tom and I, you know we've listened to a ton of music so you'd figure that we'd be able to find something find a song and submit two songs a week that that other people would love right it's actually mm-hmm. not that easy no uh, because we had such a, a a different variety of music listeners right. there people who had certain biases towards certain genres and and you know tom and i like we listen to tons of music as long as it's really not country right. um we're gonna we're gonna like it you know and, and- and if you don't already know everyone's inclinations mm-hmm. that you're that you're doing this with, mm-hmm. uh, then it makes it really difficult. Yeah. You know, I knew Jake, of course, I knew your tastes and a few other people, but there were th- there are three or four people that I just didn't really understand their tastes, mm-hmm. and they, I mean, they never picked my songs. Right. They, they, hated they hated my hated songs. songs. Yeah, they hated the ones I picked, and I kept trying to change my strategy. You know, since we were submitting two songs at a time, I'd be like, okay, I'll pick one that I, yeah, I, mm. I'll pick one that I think is kind of more electronic based that this group might like, and then one that maybe this more rock group might kind of like, and and it never went well for mm-hmm. me. It was it was too much. Yeah, and one of the things that I think we struggled with here is the reason why we started arranged music league to be a thing that we were participating in was to find new music. So we we placed emphasis on uh, voting for tracks that right. um, that's a good point that were that were new to us, and and that's key, new to us, right? Doesn't necessarily need to be a new. You could pick a song that was forty years old, but if it was new to everyone and everyone liked it, it'd get votes. The thing is, is that you have no way of knowing. If the other people in the in the league had heard right. had heard the song that you're submitting before, so you had to guess, you had to find something that was kind of obscure to hedge your bets that they hadn't heard it before, and and that made it very challenging. I submitted um, uh, Saint Vin- Saint, uh, Saint Vincent song, yeah. and everyone had heard it. You know, it was cruel. Everyone had heard cruel. But then someone submitted Beck's song Deborah. And it won that week. And I was like, how have people not heard this song? Yeah, how have people not heard of Deborah? <laughs> so you had to kind of predict what other the other people in the league had heard. What I found was that I actually found more new music, not from what all the seven other people in Music League submitted to, for in the playlist for me to listen to, but from actually taking the time to search for music that they <laughs> right. would not have heard before, um, you know, I found an O Brother song that, that yeah, actually I somebody somebody for Velocities and Music actually had requested us review that album, and then um, you know I went and, and saw I went through Velocities and Music's request from from all of our fans to find an album that that no one's ever heard before, and I selected that O Brother one and was like, this is great, and found a track that I liked off of that, and that was my number one pick that week. Yep, I and, loved that. Yep, song. I got some points. I think I don't think I got points for that song but another right. song <laughs> but it, <laughs> but it goes it goes to show you know this is something that i brought up and I, I think our second podcast ever about who gets to talk about music is that everybody on this earth even if they've only listened to one tenth of the music that you've listened to has heard something that you haven't and we learned a lot from the people in our group that that maybe even it didn't have as wide a knowledge as ex, as expansive taste as we happen to have mm-hmm. Uh, but they still had something to share with us mm-hmm. that we hadn't heard before, yeah. and I thought that that was really valuable. Another thing I want to point out that we did is throughout these 10 weeks, about half of them were just up in the air, submit whatever you want, and about half of them were themes. And I thought that the themes really mixed it up a bit, but I think that we could have done it better. Mm-hmm. Uh, so some of the themes that we used, for example, uh, we did one of where you submitted two tracks one of them had to be under two minutes and one of them had to be over eight minutes in length. And that was an interesting exercise mm-hmm. because it's I've always been fascinated by artists who are able to make a good, solid statement of a track in under two minutes. Mm-hmm. Some bands are really good at it. Some bands can't do it. Uh, but that was an interesting one. I remember I submitted uh, David Bowie's uh, Breaking Glass from his album Low. Brilliant song. It's like a, a minute and 50 seconds long somewhere in there and it just amazes me how much he accomplishes in that time Uh, at the same time it's as much of a struggle to make a song over eight minutes long that is actually 
interesting mm-hmm. and 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 keeps your attention. What what are some other ones we had? We had no soundtracks, English lyrics, no yes. English lyrics, soundtrack songs. I would like to see if we do this again. Genres, and, uh, genres, exactly. Yep. And and if you're gonna, I, I would actually recommend to our listeners try this out with your friends. Yeah, uh, you'll have a fun time. But uh, but definitely, I would encourage themes by genre yeah. because there was. I felt like there was just too much genre bias in our group. What are some ways that you guys out there have have you know tried or or you know innovative ways that you guys have found are are great at finding new artists and songs and albums for for you to love and get into? Um, you know this 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 whole exercise of you know velocities of music, the podcast, what we're doing was kind of um, you know us wanting to share uh, the discussions that Tom and I had and the music that that we listen to with with the world. But what we've gotten from all of you guys has far outweighed, I'm sure, what we've actually been able to provide as far as like finding you guys new music, right? What you guys have given to us has far outseeded exceeded that. I have found so much new music from just yeah. recommendations of people on velocities and music, whether that was from a request for an album review or just somebody saying, hey, you should check this band out sometime. You might really like them. It's a two way street for yeah, sure. It, it totally is. And, and, you know, back as Tom said, you know, on our podcast, who gets to talk about music, you know, it, it totally um, opened up the door uh, in my mind, you know, that, that kind of summed up uh, the fact that, you know, I believe that every one of us brings something to the table when it comes to to music we are not we are just two guys who turn on a microphone that doesn't make us any any more special or our opinions any more valid right Mm -hmm. so i'm totally uh interested in what everyone out there has to has to recommend and in different ways that they go about finding music um whatever whatever format that might be in Mm -hmm. leave us a note uh comment on on this this podcast if you're watching via youtube also just send us a note on on facebook a facebook message or send us an email at www.velocitiesofmusic.com or velocitiesofmusic at gmail.com i'm jake i'm tom and we are velocities of music moving music discussion forward (laughs) 